Hello, my name is Ignacio Chapella. I'm professor of environmental science at UC Berkeley, and I joined the board of Safe Strawberry Canyon because of my concern for our responsibility towards this campus, towards the creek, and towards what's happening in the canyon. These are issues that concern the university commu community, the neighbors of Strawberry and Blackberry Canyons, and the citizens in general of the Bay Area. I'm standing on a fire trail in Strawberry Canyon. Behind me, the black box you see is the molecular foundry, 96,000 square feet of construction. The university and the national laboratories are planning to build close to a million square feet of new construction on this site. They also want about 500 new parking spots dedicated for what they expect would be close to 860 new employees. All of this is planned for Blackberry Canyon, just above this hill, and above, immediately above, Hearst Avenue, its houses, its dormitories, and a main part of the campus, as well as Strawberry Canyon on this side, which is immediately above Hearst Greek Theater and the Memorial Stadium, as well as residences and dormitories. This is extremely unstable land, so close to the Hayward Fault, so steep and geologically complex. We hope that this video will explain our concerns. I'm John Shively. In the 1970s, I was the principal engineer in the UC Berkeley campus Office of Architects and Engineers. Around August of 1974, I received a telephone call from the Lawrence Berkeley Lab advising that a major hillside was sliding below Lawrence Hall of Science. Slides were occurring in two places in this period of significant drought, apparently due to underground water. I called consulting civil engineer Ben Leonard and we drove up to observe the slides. The most active slide was on the steep hillside below Lawrence Hall of Science and above a lab utility building. It had broken the internal lab road and cut the underground utilities. This slide was growing rapidly and threatened Lawrence Hall of Science. The other slide was located on the steep hillside above the lab corporation yard and just below the steep portion of Centennial Drive. It was a slower moving but had severed the underground utilities that served the Lawrence Hall of Science and threatened to take out Centennial Drive. Ben's first idea was to drill hydroggers, which are horizontal wells, into the corporation yard hillside, hoping to tap the aquifer and to let gravity drain the water. He drilled several hydroggers, but failed to hit the aquifer. I surmised that that much water had to be coming from higher up in the expansive Grizzly Peak area of Tilden Park. I proposed drilling a conventional vertical well just south of the south end of the Space Science Lab. We drilled the well and we hit the aquifer at about 150 feet down. When we commenced pumping, both slides stopped. We directed the water south into Strawberry Creek. Some of it was intercepted for the very welcome use in the drought-parched UC Botanical Gardens. I'm Garnus Curtis, Emeritus Professor in the Department of Earth and Planetary Science at the University of California, Berkeley. As a letter I wrote to the, the regents, I emphasized that there should be no buildings in either Strawberry Canyon near the stadium or Blackberry Canyon. And these are the reasons why. The geologic setting is this. Here is the active Hayward Fault. Here is the Wildcat Canyon Fault. And between them, once 10 million years ago, was a volcano. That volcano erupted violently and made a big cavity in which this whole area collapsed to form a great void. 
the outlines of the western margin of that void is here from the botanical garden northward several miles and includes all of these buildings resting on material that collapsed into the void we call a caldera. In working with uh, Shively and Ben Leonard concerning slides at this location here on Long Centennial Drive and this location over here which threatened these buildings to the west, we found that we were in volcanic rock in clay matrix which was sliding as water moved it. In this caldera filled with debris from the old cone, it left great cavities between large blocks of andesite which collected water and that water was gradually seeping out and causing these landslides and unless they pumped that water out some way we would continue to have slides in this caldera material. A horizontal hole of drill did not relieve the water but when a vertical hole was put down a well here uh, bumped into one of these cavities filled with water and over the next 10 years 16 or 14 million gallons I think 16 million gallons of water are pumped out that's a huge amount of water to pump out of one one place but that was a function of the collapsed material making many cavities in this that were not filled with ash and, and left vacancies for water the Hayward Fault, after passing very close to the edge of Bowles Hall, goes right through the stadium where it has offset the two sides of the stadium since its construction in 1927. The interior pillars holding up the stadium have been gradually deformed and only recently have been reinforced with concrete and reinforcement steel. Uh, behind Hearst Mining Building and a little east is the Lawson Adit, that is a tunnel to the Hayward Fault, almost 800 feet long. In the tunnel are several exposures of the offset of Strawberry Creek, as determined from the contained rounded cobbles of Strawberry Canyon origin. This indicates a displacement of more than 600 feet along the Hayward Fault in just a few thousand years. East of the Hayward Fault here are, sediment, are Cretaceous sedimentary rocks older than 65 million years. These are dipping westward at 20 to 30 degrees. What we're looking at here is an outcrop of sandstone, bedded sandstone, and you can see the parting dipping off toward the bay. This caldera is like a great big tub of mud with no rigidity to it at all and much heavier than water, pressing against these Cretaceous beds, dipping westward. The U.S. Geological Survey has made extensive studies of Hayward Fault and find that the return time on earthquakes going back to the time of Christ is about 130 years. The last major quake on the Hayward Fault was 1868, 140 years ago. In short, it's overdue. The survey says that there's a 65% chance of a major quake, six and a half to seven magnitude, occurring in the next 35 years. If an earthquake occurs when these beds are soaked with winter rains, the chances of a major landslide are great along the slippage plains of shale dipping westward toward the campus. Buildings in the lower parts of both Strawberry and Blackberry Canyon would be buried if not destroyed. The buildings on them will certainly move a few feet in a major earthquake, if not hundreds of feet. Keep in mind the Loma Prieta quake of 1989 of magnitude 6.9, which from a distance of over 60 miles destroyed a section of the Bay Bridge, a section of the overhead freeway in Oakland, killing 63 people, and many houses on fill ground in the marina of northern San Francisco, some 70 miles from the quake. No major buildings should be built on the hills or canyons above the campus. There are alternatives to constructing more buildings above campus. Those alternatives are cheaper 
and certainly much safer. And some of them are already owned by the university. This video is being distributed in order to alert those at risk, as well as those administrators responsible for the safety of those on campus as well as its neighbors.